Hi, and how you doing? Welcome to Hibachi Doc. Gordo the Tanks are here. I'm here with my good old buddy, Andrew the Security Guy. Hey, everybody. Aloha. And we have uh, two guests today. We have uh, 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 Vince Kimura. Vincent Kimura. Hi, hi, hi. Yep, and Vince is the uh, co-founder and CEO of Smart Yields. This has to do with farming, not to do with... Not money. Not correct. investing. It is in, money. But. Yes, correct. It's to do with farming. We'll get, we'll, get in, we'll get into that. So grab yourself a chair and grab yourself a libation and have join us Have some water with us. And have some water with us. <laughs> also... We look, had scotch in these ones. <laughs> we did. <laughs> what happened? Well, what can I say? We got broke. <laughs> 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 and and we, uh, also, uh, your chief agricultural officer will be on. Yep, Michael's here. Michael, Michael Rogers will be on. So it's the first C... AO, who I've ever we met. We have a CAO? Chief Agricultural Officer. We That's call him Cal for short. Cal. Yeah. Oh. Cal. <laughs> <laughs> we, have, we have a lot of CIOs. Yeah, they they always joke that that means career is over. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Or change in occupation. <laughs> so I don't, yeah. Change in occupation. Yeah, yeah. One of those. So too. the CAO, I might, so that got, might be a safer position. So we had that. <laughs> so then we have, we have some fun stuff. And we, so we'll switch up at, at halftime, and Angus is here doing some silliness, I'm sure. Anyway, you know, got one tech job. Okay, Excuse let's see me. It. One today. Let's see if it's you know you live in a bad district when someone takes the wheels off your shopping cart <laughs> and puts it up on blocks. <laughs> nice. Where did you find that one? Isn't that That's a beauty? I know. I got it sent to me. I said, I just love it. You know, it's <laughs> terrific. <laughs> the effort that went onto that one to do that one is classically good. Uh -huh. So yeah, so that's uh, that's what I have, and I got a little I got a little bit of news as well. But my news is going to related to um, it's not thematic this time like it normally is. Normally we we try to keep everything along the theme, mm. but fortunately because um, you were gracious enough to come in at last minute to to be our guest today, we truly appreciate it. Um, but before I get into this, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure, sure. So born in Hawaii, but raised in Asia most of my life. So okay. I went to school in Oregon, Oregon State, go Beavs. Oh, and, um, um, yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. All right. And that'll be the show today. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Thanks for having me on the show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But no, I you know, majored in environmental science. So my focus was on sustainability. Okay. And the idea really was to kind of take technology and improve the way we've been doing things, especially in agriculture. Yeah. Oh, so, okay, so what was, that, what was that major again? Environmental science. Oh, environmental sciences. Yeah. Environmental sciences. So, um, and so you've, you've, you went to high school here? No, I lived in Asia most of my oh, life. Oh, whereabouts? Uh, all over. Beijing, Hong Kong, Malaysia, Singapore, Tokyo. Uh, fa military? Uh, fathers of hotels. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> oh, awesome. Well, that's, that, what a great way that well, would I'm be. Well, I'm glad he came back here to work on ag here <laughs> instead of going back to Asia. Yeah, working on ag there. I know, he's got some really cool um, uh, cool technology. We'll, yeah, we'll talk well, about we need that, that here, though. Just a little bit. And you're, we don't have quite as much land as they do. You've seen maps, I'm sure. I have seen maps. <laughs> <laughs> we need to hire you here. And I can't, and I, you know, we had a GIS lady on here before, Tina. Yeah. And so she taught me all about maps. Yep. So we had her on before. So anyway, so we'll, we'll get into your technology, but I wanted to talk about n news, right? A little bit of news that's happening. And so, you know, a lot happening in healthcare lately. So I'm going to start focusing a little bit more on healthcare and what's going on in the healthcare mm. side. So um, June was the worst ever for hacking in healthcare. Oh, ransomware? R ransomware, oh. whatever. There was a, um, a total of 11 million patient records hacked in June alone. Wow. Just in June? Just in June. From, mostly from one, huh? I think it was the one. Yeah, that was the big. Who was uh, the one? One, one biggie. So, uh, but that. So, sorry. DHHS, Department of Health and Human Services, are giving out a number of you know um, recommendations and ideas and things for watch to watch for. So, okay. I would encourage our viewers to go you know go to their website. They've got a lot of good information out there. But it's interesting in those 11 million records that were that were um, hacked over the past um, uh, month that 41.4% uh, were hacking, 41.4, another 41.4% were actually um, involved insider wrongdoing. So oh. someone on the inside did something wrong. 
which kind of interesting. So that's right. you know fifty fifty. And then the other one was involved. Seventeen point two percent is all involved in theft, where someone stole a laptop or stole a computer mm -hmm. and so on. So again, it's that insider thing, and we need to talk about you know educating your employees. You know, watching out. What's the phrase you use? If you see something, say something. Those kinds of things. Yeah, that, and I mean, I think a lot of this is targeted, sort of like spear fishing exercises. You know, because imagine it, it's easy to take care of, like uh, take advantage of a doctor or a surgeon, for example, because you know they need to respond and they want to respond. So you, you know, if you can spear fish messages to them that they that they either click on to get the information or forward out or respond to, right. and bring malware into an organization, I, I think they're vulnerable because of that, because they have a high response rate, right? Because they're trying to take care of their patients. So right, right. Um, they got to pay attention, yeah. you know? Well, and you know, I got this, you know, I got a, a, a shout out to Hawala Grevy, another entrepreneur like yourself, who was on one of our first shows, um, who gave me this information because he's doing that file box stuff and um, his encrypted email and encrypted document, encrypted document management to help in this space. Sure. So it's really cool. So that's mine. That's all I got for news today because I want to jump back. Well, let's talk egg. So let's talk egg. So so tell us about what it is you have. What it is. Well, you're I doing. want to find out first how you decide environmental science. So yeah. Interesting. Interesting to, you know, pick that major because you're not a not an old guy. You're a young guy. <laughs> so so how did how did it uh, how, how did you decide? Huh? I know young farmers. Huh? Well, my, my, my wife was a young farmer of America. Okay. How's that? Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. Okay. Yeah, no, you know, at the time when I went to school, it was definitely an up-and-coming industry. You know, the idea was, you know, focusing on sustainability, focusing on looking at besides just profit, but looking at, you know, the, also the planet side of the people, planet, profit. Mm -hmm. And really focusing that, as, as you've seen in kind of other tech industries, be it MIS and whatnot, it's kind of this middleware uh, area where it's not science completely science-based and not completely business-based, but right in the middle. Yeah. So and, and difficult, a lot of variables, environmental variables, right? Like, is the, right. is the thing about, and then sustainable science, I mean, we need that big time. I, was, I don't think we've had anybody here that focuses on, you know, environmental we have not, science we have not. sustainable no, type sciences. This, is the, this, is, so, this is the first. That's awesome. So, so, so tell us about what it is you're doing, because you start up, you came up with this oh, idea. I forget we only get Vincent for a half. So. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Yeah, get to the magic. Okay, yeah. sorry. <laughs> then, we'll, then, we'll bring, then we'll bring the real farmer on. There you go. Yeah, so no, really, it, it comes down to pain points. So okay. we're talking to farmers, hearing their issues. Um, I mean, be it from, you name it, you know. But, but really, it's, it's figuring out kind of how we can support them using technology. And, and being that, you know, basically I had, I had worked in big businesses and big KPMGs and the consultants of the world. Right. And seeing kind of the best practices of how things are run. And then when I did my MBA, looking at, okay, from the entrepreneurship side, you know, from a global perspective, really, what kind of, what can you do technology-wise to impact the world? And Hawaii, we have an amazing advantage here, you know, beyond anyone else. You know, we have 10 of the 14 known climates right. in these islands. We have right. more microclimates than anywhere else in the world. Correct. We have every single renewable energy known, to man, known on this planet here. Okay. And we should really be the ag tech data hub. You know, we should be one of the global leaders. Ah. And we are growing that. CTAR has done an amazing job. Mm -hmm. You know, the extension agents there, a big the shout for them. CTAR says Yeah, or? the College of Tropical Agriculture and Human Resources. Okay. So they're the ag side for the University of Hawaii system. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so they do an amazing job. Their, their folks there are cutting edge. But really what it is is how can they support the small to medium-sized farmers. Right. So in Hawaii, 97% of the farmers here are small to medium-sized. Okay. And that's based on acreage. And that's based on acreage, which is a, which would be an average acreage size. I would say somewhere between one to five acres. One to five that's acres. The, actually, the global average really? is two acres. Wow. Yeah, the global average, that. yeah. yeah so you go to the big island, because I live in Waimea, yeah. and it's all small farm. All, they're all one to yes. five acre. Farmers. That's all they are. And huh. there's many, many, many of them. And I want to introduce them to you and your product. Oh, I appreciate because that. I think Thank it'd be you. very cool. Yeah. So talk about your product. What sure. are you doing? Well, so, you know, just another comment too. 99% okay. of the world's farmers are small to medium size. Okay. So you see this trend here. Like what we see in Hawaii is what we see in California, what we see around the world is that basically small farmers don't have access to huge teams. Right. They don't have access to plant scientists. They don't have access to soil scientists. They don't have access to all these different areas that the larger farmers do on their staff. And so what, what it entails is when they have issues, they go to the extension agents, the oh. local you know, universities, colleges in their area to say, hey, I got this problem. So it's like going to a doctor and saying, hey, got this problem, wow. what do I do? Sure. Right. You know, and it, of course the doctor's like, well, let me do a blood, blood test, let me do an MRI, a CAT scan. But in agriculture, it's not there. And, there, and, and I guess the small guy would be, be more reactive than proactive. Exactly. As opposed to the larger. Yes. 
far, the yeah, larger already, ones, they've already got, like you said, they got the, the scientists and everything on board, and so they're already looking at the are. soils, they're they looking are. at the waterfall, the, the rainfall, yep. any well, of those kinds of and things. And they're, they're primarily growing like corn and things, right? So they're, they're using Monsanto and Pioneer and all those guys that are planting crops yep. for them, basically. Genetics advanced, based. Right? I mean, they have a lot, those larger guys have a lot of tools. Sure. They have a ton of tools at their right. disposal. And really, the small guys don't. Yeah, he's reacting to a bad. <laughs> uh oh, <laughs> my garden's gone back. So yeah, like, you it's know, too he's, late. He's it's found out. Yeah, he's yeah. already lost a crop or something. Yeah, yeah, and the big guys got airplanes. Yep. You know, they got the drones. Yep. They got all satellite the satellite images. That, they got the satellite imagery. You know, and the small guys. There's no way they can afford well, that. Well, you know, it's funny because we all think, oh, satellites are great, but one pixel on your screen is equivalent to thirty thousand corn plants. That's a, wow. that's, that's a lot. So of it's work. almost like, wow, that doesn't really do, do yeah, anything yeah. for a small farmer. Yeah. Right. You know, right. I mean, it's it's not even a blip, but a blip. Right. So what right. do they do? Well, unfortunately, you know, unfortunately, farmers kind of, you know, they 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 have years of experience or generations for that right. matter. Right. Right. Uh, and then all see they, they kind of go with their gut. You know, one one of these things. You know, and and God bless them, they do a great job. But really, we need to give them data science. We need to give them the tools to make those decisions. You know, the simple of when to water and how much to water, right. when to add nutrients, right? And all those things, you know, based on what is transpiring in the environment. Mm -hmm. I know, I never thought of it, but think, yeah, you're right. So it's like, when do I, when do I, when do I, you know, fertilize? Exactly. How much do I fertilize? Wouldn't it, you would think you know, that, uh, sorry to cut you off, I no, think that no. the environment's been crazy. A lot of people say, oh, it's getting hotter, or it's, you know, remember like <laughs> the summer here was hot, then the summer here was cold, then it rained all one summer, so it, it seems to be changing more than it, it used is. to, or a little more variability it in the is. environment, which that the guy who's just using his gut check or using history, he's suffering in, when the environment's not doing what it usually does, right? Yeah. So you have, you have, you know, you're developed technologies that are, um, that analyze the soil, that, you know, alert the farmers to what's going on, those kinds of things? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we are hardware agnostic, which means that we work with pretty much most of the hardware providers out there. And so we're a data company, and that's okay. what we focus on, so software. Software, and you gather the data from all the different sensors that you can buy from all the different um, agricultural companies. Correct. So we're, we're slowly integrating based on what the farmers have told us what they're using. And really the biggest challenge we see is vetting those hardware manufacturers. Okay. Vetting the sensors, vetting all this information because one, you can install it, but then if it breaks in three weeks, then well, that's kind of silly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So a lot of that kind of, you know, I guess bulletproofing is really what we're looking for. So are you, they're pulling data off and sending it to you or they're, you're, they're sending it up to the cloud? How's they're sending it to the cloud. Awesome. Yeah. Nice. So really what so we're focusing on. So you got a dashboard on, for them? Yeah. Yeah. Right we're everything. So, you know, we're very fortunate. We've got a great team. So our CTO is basically a PhD in, in wireless sensor design and deployment. He yeah. works on some pretty amazing sensor stuff for like particle accelerator stuff. I mean, really way beyond me. Our chief software engineer is basically a phenomenal younger guy who's, oh, who, there's oh, there you go. <laughs> who uh, oh, basically. I know a few of those players. <laughs> <laughs> All who right. basically has designed yeah, right. this mobile software for us. Yeah. And really, it's all about scalability. So That's compared to some of our competitors that really started maybe three or five years ago, it's a completely different ballgame. And you guys know this from a technical side. Sure. It's all about how can you utilize what's already out there and not build it from, you know, my generation yeah. when we went to school. It's like, oh, you've got to do HTML and all this coding stuff. Well, that's, right. that's beyond us now. I mean, that's... That's You're just taking the data, getting extracted, but it's all in different formats. Exactly. And then you've got to take it and digest it and all do those things yes. and put it in a way that I, I, as the farmer, can read it and, and understand it. That's the, that's the kicker right there. And so okay. when we started this project through Blue Startups, so we went through their accelerator program, okay. we were very fortunate to have been accepted, and actually the first ag tech company. Mm, awesome. and, and really it was, it was what, can we, what can we learn from this? How can we fail fast? Because right. you know we're trying to create the secret sauce. Right. So we started with our version one, and we learned that you know farmers, you know generally it's it's like they, they you know if they're looking at charts and numbers and whatnot that doesn't really add value to them, you know so they need this beyond this they need something kind of like a Fitbit for their farm. Okay. Yeah, right? Fitbit for a farm. Oh, I like that Fitbit for the farm. Okay, we're gonna have to take a pause break and sure. we're gonna swap you out for um, for Michael Rogers. We'll get a Fitbit okay. for your farm. <laughs> Fitbit for I like your it. farm. I like that. Fitbit for your farm. Anyway, Vince, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we give every every one of our guests a autograph solo cup. Oh I appreciate it. You get it. eight <coughs> number seventy seven A. Thank you. Because he was on the first <laughs> one. That's first. nice. So you get seventy seven A. So thanks. We're gonna get uh, we're gonna it. get Angus, we're gonna get Mike Rogers to come on and talk about how the farmer can use all this great technology. Thanks so much for hey, appreciate it. Thank, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thanks man. Appreciate all right. Aloha, I'm Chantal Seville, host of the Savvy Chick Show on Think Tech Hawaii, and I'm going on tour. I'm taking you around the world. We're going to Canada, and then we're going to, well, we're in America, then we're going to San Francisco. So keep staying tuned, 11 a.m. every Wednesday on the Savvy Chick Show. We'll see you next time.
Hi, I'm Ethan Allen, host of Likeable Science on Think Tech Hawaii. I hope you'll join me each Friday afternoon as we explore the amazing world of science. We bring on interesting guests, scientists from all walks of life, from all walks of science, to talk about the work they do, why they do it, and moreover, why it's interesting to you. What the science really means to your life, its impacts on you, how it's shaping the world around you, and why you should care about it. I do hope you'll join me every Friday at 2 p.m. for Likeable Science. Hi, my name is Justini Spiritu. This is my co-host, Matthew Johnson. Every Thursday at 4 p.m., we host the Hawaii Food and Farmers Series. This is the place you can come to for insight on the perspective and history and passions of Hawaii's farmers and all folks involved in Hawaii's local food system. What kind of folks do we have on? So we have everyone from local farmers, we have foodies, chefs, we also have journalists, uh, researchers, anyone who's actually working to help make Hawaii's local food system that much better. So join us every Thursday and uh, tweet into us and ask us some questions and leave your comments as well. Hey, aloha, and welcome back to Hibachi Talk. Uh, we got Angus. We drug him in off the beach, and I think it's time to hear what he's got going on. Angus, how you doing, buddy? How you doing, lad? Good to see you back. Hey, Michael, nice to see you, lad. Hey, how's it going? Good. Very, I was picking my potatoes yesterday <laughs> up in my mayor. We got, a, we got, I got six whole potatoes yesterday. <laughs> Huge crop coming in. Right on. Big crop coming in. Anyway, we're going to keep you on your, uh, your Scottish Word of the Week, lad. So, you ready? Try them. Scottish Word of the Day. Here it goes. It's going to be, what is it? Hace your back. All right, it could mean scratch my back, it could mean return soon, or it could be hurry up. I think hurry up. Wrong! Uh, it's about damn time you got one right. <laughs> <laughs> well, nice try. Anyway, for once, I beat you. Anyway, we'll try, we'll try. Anyway, I got a wee gadget, and it's kind of thematic. It's, uh, it's this cool way to charge your iPhone with fire. What? Yeah, is that a neat little thing? It's, it's called, uh -huh, it's, right yeah, it's a biolite. You know, you can be, you can uh, go to the farm, steal someone's food, <laughs> cook it on your little, your little, your little, your little fireplace set, and then charge up your phone at the same time. Okay. So uh, I like that. Not that, but here's something you think of. But the farmers are out there, right? And they're reading the sensors. You know, if their batteries get low, they can just start a wee fire and charge up their battery. Okay. How's that? Awesome. How uh, much is it? One hundred and seventy-nine dollars. What? Whoa. Not bad. Whoa. You better charge at home. But have one's a pizza oven. That's even more fun. <laughs> Anyway, that's my gadget for the week. And remember, everybody, let your wing gang free wherever you be. Hello. Ha. All right, Angus, thanks for that. So cool little gadget, and uh, I failed another word of the day. <laughs> I think we're going to go to the security minute now, which I've got an update for you on some drone. We talked about some drone technology previously. Um, DJI, who makes a lot of these drones, put out a software update um, this week. So a lot of the previous drones, drones could launch in areas where they weren't supposed to. And now they've got uh, geofencing built into this, new, this latest oh, version wow. of their app. So that, you know, if you've got the drone and you, there are ways you can unlock this feature, but you need to register to unlock it so that the FAA know that you did. Uh, otherwise, this will keep you from flying in an area where you're not supposed to fly. Oh, cool. And so it keeps the, these hobbyists from doing things wrong that could hurt somebody else. So my only point was if you've got iPhone, Android-based versions of DJI software, go update them today. All right. That's cool. my safety Very minute. Cool. And we got Safe. Mike Rogers here. Talk a little more ag tech. Yeah. Mike, welcome. All right, thank Aloha. you. Nice Aloha. to have you aboard. So um, again, our first chief agricultural. CAO. Yeah. How'd you come up with that? Is that, is that no, popular well, in farming? No, CAOs? No, we actually had to look it up <laughs> for, for a title that would fit uh, an agriculture person in, in a technological company. Right on. Yeah. So right on. where did you go to school? Where'd you grow up? Uh, well, I was born in Japan. I'm grow I grew up moving back and forth between Japan and Hawaii. Okay. Oh. Uh, I went to Mid-Pacific Institute for high school. Oh, my, my, one of my favorite schools of yeah. all the schools here in town. It's a great school. It's awesome. Yeah, I love it. And then I went to uh, University of Hawaii and uh, studied at CTAR, that we just mentioned. Right. And I uh, got a degree from there in uh, tropical plants and soil sciences. Wow. Tropical plants and soil sciences. So, so, you, so how did you guys meet? He looked how like you he just got out of college yesterday. <laughs> I know, so, I know. so you just went straight and started farming? Was that, you know, was that a goal? 
No, actually, uh, out of high school, what I did was I bounced around a couple different careers. And this is uh, my third career that I ended up in. And uh, my first two careers were in gaming and uh, gemstones. Oh, wow. I was a gem dealer in my last career. And um, through those different careers, I kind of uh, got an understanding and appreciation for, for the environment and also um, agriculture in the third world. I spent a lot of time in the third world. And then okay. I grew a passion in agriculture and sustainability. And then here I am now. And it came. Wow. And then, then, so then you hooked up with Vince. That's and right. And then you guys said, "Okay, we've got a. You need. You, you got a way to help the smaller farmer." Yeah, right. that's so, right. And, and like you said, ninety some odd percent of the farmers in the world are small. Yeah, yeah. In fact, you know, the drone technology just showed. That's technology that actually big agriculturists use today. Mm -hmm. They have uh, drones that fly over crops. Uh, through a pattern that is pre-programmed that they come back to your charging station on its own. And that's kind of technology that you don't see in small farms because mm. you know, that we don't, they don't have that kind of um, understanding or, or even the, the financial power to bring in that kind of technology into small scale. Uh, yeah, I've got to imagine small farmers got n enough on their plate oh, yeah. to get the stuff out of the, you know, in the ground and then out of the ground, let alone trying to learn technology and all those kinds of things. Definitely, so it's hard work. So, you, so you're out pounding the, pound, not the pavement because it's gag, <laughs> so you're out pounding the pavement talking to the small farmers and saying, how can we help you and such? That's right. And we're trying to create a solution that works for, for that, you know, we want to make a, a for us by a solution for, for agriculture. Okay. So what's the biggest pain point that, that you, they have in Hawaii? I mean, it's a good growing season here. They can grow mm -hmm. year-round. There's a few advantages, but what, what's the biggest pain point? Uh, there's a couple from? of things. One is uh, definitely pests and diseases. Ah. You know, while on the mainland there's winter, so all the insects basically die off or, or go in hibernation during right. the winter. But in Hawaii, they can reproduce all year round. Ah, so ah, that kind of thing that. never goes away, and it's always an issue, and disease pressure is huge in Hawaii. Huh. Right. And does it, does it impact yield? I mean, is it a... a definitely. Oh, I definitely. see. Okay. Wow. So there, so there's, you know, I'm thinking that they had trouble with bee, uh, mite for the bees, mm -hmm. and taking care of the me bees. We've got this ohia sudden death that's going on now in the right. Big Island. And it just comes out of nowhere. Coffee, there's coffee berry borer. Okay, so that's right. Depending on the types of pests and diseases or pathogens, we can track the movement of these pathogens or pests according to environmental conditions. So say ah. coffee berry borer, they like certain types of conditions like humidity and temperature. And as that condition goes up the hill and down the hill, you can see the movement of these, of these diseases and pests. Now, because you've got sensors in the ground that are, that are sensing them walking by? Like, it's like <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's a pitter-patter of little feet. Eventually, we'll yeah. get there. <laughs> <laughs> so so it's, you just know by, the, you know by the insect itself or what's happening with the crop? It, it's kind of an indirect way of figuring out how movements of these things happen. Wow. So, so have you got a lot of this technology deployed at a number of farms here down in Hawaii? Or? We have uh, seven farms that we've deployed um, our sensors at, and uh, so far so good. Um, we're getting a lot of feedback. We're still going through our, our beta testing with our technology. So we're learning a lot, and we're building a platform that works for everybody. So do you think, um, will it help also with watering? I mean, what, what, other, oh, what, yeah. what are the Im expected impacts from the, you know, the data that you gather? What are, the, what are the kind of the feedback that you're giving to the small farmers today that they weren't getting before? Yeah, so in agriculture, there's a lot of guesswork and a lot of inefficiencies as far as um, whether it be watering or fertilizing or even uh, pesticides application. Um, so for example, if there's a leakage in, in irrigation at some point, uh, on the other side of the farm, there's less water being, being applied to, the, to your crops than this side of the farm. And you can't see that until a couple of weeks later, uh -huh. and you find out that those crops are not doing well, and then you go and troubleshoot. Well, what we do is we give live data so that farmers can make decisions on that day and troubleshoot everything. Yeah, they, they get a sensor mm. that says, wait, this, oh, you know, this area hasn't gotten, hasn't yeah. been right. uh, irrigated today. Because otherwise, okay, by, if you just watched it, you uh, wouldn't know. Yeah, and, and <laughs> it's hard to sure. just watch five acres. I mean, yeah. five, five acres, is, you say it's small, but five acres is a, is, it's it's a, lot, it's a lot of area. It's, it's a few 40,000 square feet, an acre, right? right? Something like that. So that's a lot, that's a lot to cover, oh, yeah. even though it is, it is, it is small. So, um, so where do you see this? Where, where are you guys headed? What's your what's happening with what you're doing now with your, the, the technology? So, are you looking for funding, or can you talk about that, or you know, or 
Yeah, oh, you got, got the nod yes. over there. Yeah. So, I got the big yeah. thumbs up. Okay, from the boss. Yeah. So, so you're looking for funding? That's why we're here. Yeah. Yes, right. uh, we're you know we're coming up to our second round of funding, and uh, yes, we are definitely looking for funding. Um, say that. Do. Say that right there to the camera. Yeah. <laughs> yes, we are looking for funding. There you go. For agriculture Good technology job. to make the world a better place. That's right. Okay. Well, What's the website? Well, that, I was going to ask you at the end, but give it now. It's smartyields.com. <laughs> smartyields.com. There you go. And check it out. It, it is, is really cool. And a couple of good videos in there too. Oh, and especially in right. Hawaii. I mean, you know, this we have limited limited resources here, obviously. Mm -hmm. right. And so and apparently we have all the climates. We have ways to take advantage of and leverage it, but we need science to help us with that. Right. right. And we want farmers to farm. Yeah. We want farmers to stick their to do to their jobs and, and take care of their crops. And we don't wanna have to we don't want them to have to go on the online and do research on technology and figuring out what to buy or what not to buy. We want to help them with that process. Well, I imagine that if they start getting all that data and start doing, you know, analytics, and whether they're doing the analytics or someone's doing the, doing the analytics for them, that mm -hmm. you can start saying, you know, we, this is happening when you're doing this kind of uh, fertilizer at these, these times of the season and so on. So, um, I mean, I'm just thinking, why, man, all those small farmers up there, and they're growing everything you can well, think I, of. I keep yeah. thinking of, like, nitrogen levels, like you mentioned, water levels. You know, how, how do they, because you, you're obviously testing the soil for them to make sure that it's optimal for growing what they grow, and that's mm -hmm. different. I know they, don't they rotate crops in some places to put more stuff in the ground so that the next year, I know there's, yes. a, lot of, there's a lot of science to it. I don't there's know. a lot of science, and there's a lot of experience behind it. A lot of these farmers have been doing farming for decades. Yeah. yeah. And, and, um, uh, and it's great experience and they're doing great work, uh, but climate is changing, things are changing, crops are changing, people's needs are changing. Right. So in order to adapt to all those changes, you want to have technology there to help you support do that. Well, speaking of changing crops, you know, one of the guys on the Big Island, i got to try and hook up with him. He's, uh, I heard yesterday he's going to start growing uh, hops. Cause, oh, for uh, beer. Yeah, for beer. Actually, for the Big Hawaiian Island hops, for right. the Big Island brew house, and they're gonna hops. they're gonna look at this idea of growing local growing hops for the beers that they're going to be uh, nice. producing on the Big Island. And the Big Island brew house, they won another award uh, last week for one of their one of their beers. So it'd be oh. kind of a, a cool thing. But local farmer, right there, you know, local farmer, young like you guys, though, yeah. young guys. So, um, but it, you know, second generation or third generation, mm -hmm. so it's been handed down. Another crop. You, have the medical marijuana guys given you guys a call yet? Oh, yeah. You know, yeah, we, they want higher yields. <laughs> <laughs> they want big yields. Exactly. We do want to focus on high-value crops to begin with right? Um, because they can invest more money per square foot of their growing facility. Mm -hmm. So cannabis is way up there. So we're definitely focused on cannabis out there. Uh, we're focusing also, also on coffee. And, well, I mean, we're not, we're not counting anybody out at this point. Right. But in order... For us, the driver technology and, and those people have the biggest needs for, for censoring and, and keeping track of what's going on in their farm, especially for hydroponic applica uh, hydroponics and aquaponics. Uh, th when plants are growing just in water, uh, there is no buffer for, for environmental changes. Right. You know, if it's in soil, yeah, you know, there's overwatering or, or whatnot. There's buffer that uh, the soil provides, but when you're in water, uh, any any change, any minute change that happens in water directly affects the plants right away. This is cool. Yeah. Well, you're not going to believe this, but we have burned through another half hour show. That fast? That's how fast so, it goes. Real quick, smarter yields. How much more if I've got some good technology? What's my percentage of yield that I could expect to increase? You got Oof. a ballpark for me? Five percent. That's hard to say. You know. Um, there are uh, different uh, nursery growers that grow a lot of different ornamental mm -hmm. crops, and there has been uh, some work done with nutrients and uh, different types of management by closely monitoring what happens to, to the potted plants, and they've increased their yield by 100%. Oh, Ooh. think of that. Awesome. That's awesome. That's awesome. That's smarter yields. Anyway, so this has uh, been uh, Hibachi Talk on Think Tech. We've had our, our guests on here, Vincent Kimura and uh, Michael Rogers here, um, from uh, Smart Yields. Check out their website. I'm serious. They got some cool stuff send happening them some money, out there. Invest in and Hawaii. send them some money and to invest in Hawaii. And oh, as we do with all of our guests, we give you the cup. You get the B cup. Seventy-seven <laughs> B. Seventy-seven B. So right it's on. all there. So anyway, as we say at the end of the show to all of our, you know, thank you Zuri and thank you Nick and thank everybody who's helping us to get this together. But as we say at the end of every show, one, two, three. How you, how you doing? How you doing? How you doing?